again and welcome back to the channel and this time we are at what's known as the Gop and these are uh, limestone caves but behind me the bit higher up there is a neolithic well purported to be a neolithic burial ground and if it's not it's some sort of defensive mound that's been man-made 4,000 to 2,500 BC, very old, and uh, it has been excavated in the past but no human remains have been found, but I believe some have been found in these caves behind us, so at some point we're going to go in there and have a mooch about and have a look at it and see what we think, and then we'll go up onto the, uh, the mound and we'll have a look around because there is evidence of the, the test tunnel that they, well they dug a tunnel down there to see hoping they were going to find some burial chambers they did find some animal remains it's kind of strange but anyway I'm going to give you a 360 of the position where we are tonight because we've got some fantastic views here <laughs> Outdoors in the stairs, uh, so we may have to set a tent up or a tent. So, so around here, around this uh, area, it's surrounded by forests. Just there in front of you, straight ahead, that is the Gop. That is the mine that was built in the Neolithic times. Now, given the views we've got behind us, I think it's probably been some sort of lookout post. I know there's uh, reports that it's had a beacon on it in the past. It would be a very good military strategic point for looking out. We've just come down from the, uh, the little town there, the little hamlet, to Larnwood, I think that's how it's pronounced and uh, there's a free car park on High Street if you're looking to come here and have a look at this yourselves Limestone caves. See what's like inside. As I was saying earlier, I think these are the ones that they found actual human remains in. Evidence of Neolithic. I don't think these have been worked, I think it's water, water's done this. They're not very big, not very extensive. That's why tomorrow we're going to try and find something a bit more similar to what we usually do. Uh, it's better 
graffiti script in there. I'll see if we can find some old dates. Eighteen. Eighteen or something. I think that's as far as that goes. I think there's three more entrances, but they're crawl throughs. So we're probably going to leave them until tomorrow. <clears throat> there's other thing I just spotted. These. These unusual markings. These straight, straight lines, which you don't, you don't usually get in nature, so they are probably man-made. For what reason, we don't know. Oh, we've got, we've got a date down here. You seen this here, Paul? Seventeen eleven. There ought to be somebody playing dash tricks, won't it? You put any date you want on. That's that one. That's a larger of the openings. Whether that's a larger of the uh, the caves or the other ones go further back, I don't know. So we'll take a look at them next. I might not be going this tonight, but we can certainly just get down and have a look. Right, this week I've been on a, a website called Valley of Stone and I've been trying to find some information about those three lads that uh, got lost down at uh, Facet Martin. I couldn't find much, but I did find these oral histories of uh, people that either knew people that worked in Facet or had something to do with the railways around there or quarrying. I'll play a little bit of it. And if you go onto the Valley of Stone website and go to the search part at the top and just put oral histories in the search, you'll come up then with a list of these little podcasts or oral histories they're calling them. Well, my, my grandfather originally came from Derbyshire um, with the railways um, in the valley uh, and became uh, the boss, if you like to call him that, on the, uh, of the quarries in Whitworth. Right, so you'd be involved in maybe setting up the railway with, uh, with the railways, yeah, on yeah. the moored tops as well. Uh, right, right on within the quarry itself. Yes. Right. Well, he, he he came with the with the railways that came up into the uh, to Rochdale and up into Bakewell. What are your first memories of working? Um, the first what? memories of working there is that uh, I, I enjoyed it. It was. It, it could be very hard, mm. you know, uh, especially the weather, yeah. and especially winter time. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, uh, the dampness, the rain, and that. You know, but then there were times when they were fine, and it, yeah. it, it were great. You know, uh, I right. I think you'll agree they're quite interesting if you into this kind of underground on quarry stuff. Uh, there's maybe ten or, or twelve, maybe for these little three to five minute snippets of uh, oral history and uh, they're on the Valley of Stone website but besides them there is a lot of more information on the quarries around the Rosendale area as well 
So if you're not familiar with that website, it's, it's well worth a look. Yeah, that rather than the water coming through them, them openings from above, did the sea come into here yeah. and erode it by slowly flushing out bit by bit. Seems we're not that far away from the coast, really. Here. Mm. Maybe two miles away. Mm. Right, it's that time of night. Well, we get the stove out, get a bit of food cooking, and after that, get in our sleeping bags. We're barely full of warm food. Take you outside now because we've got a, a full moon. Well, not quite a full moon, but 99% full moon. Uh, I don't know if you've got fire and stove as well, you can do baking and egg butters together. Mm. Yeah, so it's a 99% full moon. some eggs going and some bacon and then for breakfast we've got fish fingers Right, we've had some nice food, so it's time now to uh, get the sleeping arrangement sorted. Yeah, maybe I'll get this sorted and then uh, see what I'm in about another five ten minutes. So I'm going to eat tonight, just right in the corner there. Not as bad as earlier, it's quite cold here about eight o'clock so I'm going to get that uh, oil mat and my inflatable mat set up and then get the sleeping bag on top of there and that'll be me till about eight o'clock okay so that's bed for tonight a bit breezier out here than inside there but uh, once I get in there I can get sleep on the back right we've had the uh, bacon and egg butties Time for some fish finger butties now. And then time for bed after that, I think. Right, just about got to the end of this uh, camp for tonight. Gonna set up my uh, Bluetooth speaker. Get a Joe Rogan podcast on. I think we're gonna put the latest Mike Tyson one on and uh, get in the sleeping bag. And we'll see you tomorrow, ready for whatever we're gonna do tomorrow. We don't know yet.
Okay, so we've been in one entrance here. That's quite a large cave. You can scramble on your knees a little bit to squat through and get into a large part. But this one is, I think it's belly, belly down and crawling. So we'll have a look what this has got in it. All right, so the, I'm gonna crawl under that. Not really expecting it to go that far, but let's have a, a look. can see straight away as it goes on a bit further under a, maybe an even tighter squeeze but thankfully no rocks to crawl over got a bit of a nuke just just there You what? It goes flatter with less rocks on. Oh, I think it was up a bit further down. Yeah, there could be could be a spot just underneath here that I can turn round. Interesting feature that's just there. I'm probably just going to pop my head in this for the sake of videoing. This far in there, I may as well continue. Oh, oh yeah, there's big enough room for a spin ring when you get in here. You can probably sit up. In fact, it's told me something about that other entrance. Should have come in on the other entrance, Paul. Yeah, if you go into the other entrance now. I'm glad I've come in there because it goes round quite a bit more. Oh, aye. Right, looks like we are continuing a little bit more. Yeah, but from here, it goes on probably twice as long again. Down. Right. Yeah, there is a there's another opening. As you can see, our poles are scrambling through there now. Yeah, that's a miles easier opening. That's the way I'll be going out. Yeah. Not wet as I thought either. No, it's been it's been wet. You're gonna get a little bit muddy. Yeah, it opens up reasonably. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm just uh, getting myself down this bit. Is oh, yeah. a little bit more view coming immediately. Yeah, I didn't see this until I got right in. 
Just gonna probably get low enough on this one that I can shine deeper into the oh, and see. Oh, really right. I'll probably go through that if I ever came back because I'd have my waterproof trees on but I ain't getting covered in sludge today. Okay. I'm gonna get out of here now. Is it? Let me get one more step further. Yeah, it's Can you see the wall at the back? You what? Can you see the wall at the back? Can you see? Or does it just carry on going? In fact, it carries on going. I don't know if that's covering a hole. It's raining that I don't know if it gets a wall up back or it's around the corner. Yeah, it? yeah. Just take it and take another step forward. There's a dry rock check in, just what's Is this not that one what that trekker went in? I don't, I don't know. No, it's not the one that we watched before no. ages ago, no. I can tell whether it goes right around that corner, what is. Because that was up near World's End, I think. Yeah. Oh, we're getting out of there. Yeah, you get that little bit of clock before, we just come over here. Oh, bloody hell you are. Yeah, if I had walked pre trousers on, I would have done a, a bit more of a crawl on that one. Yeah. Just out of curiosity. Uh, oh. Right, I'm going to switch off now and get out of here. Right, so that was entrance number two and number three. I went in through number two and then we turned around and came out on entrance number three. So that's that for today here. But we'll go up onto that mound and I'll show you where, I think you can still see where the, uh, they dug a tunnel down, hoping to find some burial chambers. And then I think they went sideways once they got down, but it has all been filled back in. On the very top of the mound is like a depression. So we'll show you that. Okay, so this, this is a Neolithic mound. And uh, it's debatable whether it has been a burial chain, a burial mound, or whether it's more been used as a military outlook. Did have a beacon on here at one time. And uh, I believe it had a lot of stones, but they've been taken off a building. So just here, I think, is where they would have, because we're right on the top here. And they dug down vertically. From here, you can see that 
would really be a good strategic point and night look and obviously a good pleasure of beacon. the nearest town there, Trillarmwood. Just round the corner from the, those trees there, I think that's pressed satin and real along the coastline. If you zoom in over there, this bit looks interesting there, just now looks quarried. We're going to try and find something else to explore today. Yeah, just on the way back, spotted that. It's probably been formed the same way as the other caves, to be honest, but just a smaller degree because we have got a bit of a limestone outcrop there. Right, so, so go and have a look on Google Maps and on Google itself. See if we can find another mine or a quarry or something around here and we'll have a look at that. So.